think we found a nuanced picture, but still cause for a cautious optimism. So there has been a slowdown in the rate of job uh, creation. That's not a surprise given the lockdowns that have been underway, the recession that has followed. But at the same time, if we look at the proje projections that heads of HR and those at the front lines of making these decisions, what they're saying, we find overall the rate of job creation will still surpass the rate of job destruction. So that is overall positive news. However, the window of opportunity that we have to ensure that workers then have the right kinds of skills for the future, that window of opportunity just got a whole lot shorter. And so we will need a lot more effort from business, government and workers themselves to ensure that they have the kind of reskilling and upskilling they need. When it comes to these new jobs that are going to be created to fit the needs of the new world, what, what is the time frame relative to the job losses that we're seeing and, and we're seeing accelerated as a result of COVID-19? In other words, are these new jobs going to be able to immediately absorb those people who've lost their jobs in other sectors? No, and I think there is, um, exactly as you're pointing out, there is a lag. So what we're looking at are predictions for the next five years, but at the same time, we've tried to assess what is the damage that is currently underway. And it's clear that there are a number of jobs that are either on pause um, or have been lost, and there are predictions of further automation. At the same time, there are gains expected, especially as the economy revives, in a number of different areas. And I think what's critical to point out there is some of them are very technology-driven jobs. So there are jobs that relate to uh, artificial intelligence. There are jobs that broadly relate to the use of technology. But there are also very human jobs, if you will. There are jobs that relate to the care economy, for example, that will also be growing in the next five years. But there is a lag, and I think there's an opportunity to use that lag in a positive way and actually start shifting workers towards the new skills that they will require. We tried to also understand what is the time that's required for some of this reskilling to take place. And what we found quite interesting is when it comes, for example, to roles in the artificial intelligence space or data analysis, um, it's actually just a few months of retraining that could get somebody without much of that skill set today to be moved into that role. So what this is going to require is a concerted effort on the parts of governments. Now, they've been spending a lot of money in providing support to various sectors, to households, to workers directly they will now need to start channeling some of that funding for very specific efforts to reskill and upskill workers and then help make them tr transition into the job of the future.